Hello out there. Welcome to Read Aloud, uh, reading live stream with Thorn Dog and Tracy and I kind of pattering through here. So today I'm going to, so I'm pasting our link into the uh, <clears throat> into the Google chat here. And uh, oh, I see at least one of you is up there. Hello, other. Uh, mm -hmm. All right. So I have a couple of uh, a couple of books here to share. Let's see. Oops. There we go. All right. Uh, so 13 Moons on Turtle's Back is one. Uh, the other one I brought is uh, Race to Moonrise. I brought this one home. Uh, I brought this one home. And there's the other, the book I'm going to, <coughs> excuse me, the book I'm going to use is our next read aloud October. Uh, oh, after a while, Robert is going to be reading this one. So I'll save that for a little bit. But if you, how uh, about you type in, in the classroom stream, why don't you type in what you start to notice about these, uh, these books that I'm reading. And keep in mind the, um, you know, these are, these are all different, slightly different genres. This is a origin story, well, Book of Moons, as you'll see, a uh, race to Moonrise, it's a, a journey, kind of an adventure story. Um, I guess these two are very similar to Island Blue Dolphin, Adventure, um, and then Race to Moonrise also. Okay. Um, but we're going to start with Moon on Turtle's Back. Uh, very nice illustration there. All right. Grandfather leaned over the long spruce log. The small boy stood close, waiting for the old man to notice him. Grandfather looked up, a small smile on his face. Quay, so that, he said. You do well at watching. Come closer. See now what I have done. So that reached up to touch the carved shape of the turtle. How many scales are on old turtle's back? Grandfather said. He now looked. So that I counted with care. Thirteen, he answered. Uh-huh, Grandfather said. There are always thirteen on old turtle's back. And there are always and there are always thirteen moons in each year. Many people do not know. They they do not know as we are uh, but each moon has its own name, and every moon has its own story. I learned those stories from my grandfather. Someday, grand, someday, grand, someday, grandson, if your memory is as sharp as your eye, you will be able to tell them to your grandchildren. Grandfather, as I said, do other native people have moons too? The old man nodded. Yes, grandson. <laughs> Yeah, beyond me too. I think you're gonna like this one um, because this tells. Who else is up there? Oh, hello, Shreya. Our dog says hello. Penta. Uh, my love. Oh, thank you. I'll, uh, I'll try to read a little louder. Uh, this is the first time I've done a live stream from the sofa here. All right. Uh, where was I? Oh, next one is a uh, moon on popping trees. Moon on popping trees. It says, outside of the lodge, the night air is bitter cold. Now the frost giant walks with his club in his hand. When he strikes the trunk of the cottonwood trees, we hear them crack beneath the blow. The people hide inside when they hear that sound. But Coyote, the wise one, learned the giant's magic tongue. And when Coyote sang it, the frost giant slept. Now, when the cottonwoods crack with the frost again, our children know, unless they hear coyote song, they must stay inside. So the fire is right, and buffalo robes keep us warm. 
Interesting. <laughs> oh, fuzzy, huh? Okay. Yeah, thanks for bearing with us. I'll, um, oh, good. Okay, so some of you can hear me okay, some of you not so much. Um, yeah, we'll keep practicing until we get it right. So this, this already I noticed some things about the uh, moon of popping trees. Hmm. Oh, and this, at the very bottom it says, this is the first moon from the Northern Cheyenne people. Uh, this moon is called <laughs> Baby Bear Moon. Mm -hmm. Long ago, long ago, a small child was lost in this moon. We thought she had frozen, but when the spring came, well, when spring came, she was seen with the mother bear and her small cub. She had slept all through winter with them. From then on, the bears were her family and her friends. When we walk by on our snowshoes, we will not bother a bear or her baby. Instead, we think how those small bears are like our children. We let them dream together. So this is from the, uh, this one. This, this is the second moon from the Potal Watomi. Potal Watomi. Potal Watomi. Next is a uh, maple sugar moon. Maple sugar moon. Long ago, maple syrup dripped thick from the trees all year round. You just had to break a twig and lie down beneath the tree with an open mouth. The people got lazy when our creator, Yit Chi Ma Ni Tu, sent his helper, Mana Bozo, to visit. He found their village deserted. All the people asleep on the maple tree. So he poured much water into all the maples so that now people would have to wake up, make fires, and boil down the sap to make food. We would have to work hard for that maple sap with flow just this one time of the year. The time we now call maple sugar moon. That's, uh, this is the third moon from the Ani Shunabe. Honey, should not be people. <laughs> <Maple. laughs> All right. <clears throat> the other thing I can do, maybe I'll bring the computer closer. Yeah. We're over here. Uh, next is frog moon. Frog moon. So the first thing I saw was uh, not the frog. <laughs> See what I saw first? It wasn't the beaver. <laughs> yeah. Like a uh, little bit. Like a uh, wild robot. Um, frogs and wild robot? All right, so frog moon. When the world was young, we, the uh, kid jack, the trickster, met with all the animals to decide how many moons would be winter. Moose answered, There should be as many moons of winter as hairs on my body. Amik, the beaver, said, there should be as many winter moons that scale on my day. Then, Oma Kaki, the little frog, said, There should only be as many moons of snow as toads on my foot. We, the kid Jack, decided that this was right. So the winter lasts only five moons. And when it ends, the small frogs sing their victory song in this moon with their name. Mm. So that's the, uh, this is the fourth moon and by the Cree, Cree people, Cree nation. Oh, pretty. All right, next one, budding moon. One year, old man winter refused to leave our land. And so our people asked for help from our great friend, Jushkeha, known to some as the sun. He knocked on the door of winter's lodge and entered and sat by winter's cool fire. Leave here or you will freeze, winter said. But Ju Skeha breathed and winter grew smaller. Ju Skeha waved his hand and a white owl flew down to carry winter back to the deep snow of the south. I'm sorry, to the deep snow of the north. The lodge melted away and the trees turned green with new buds. 
and birds began to sing where the cold, and where the cold fire of the winter had been was a circle of white mayflower. So it happens each spring. And the budding moon comes and the animals wake and we follow them across our wide, beautiful land. And here we go. Here's another thing. The animals waking after a long snow. It's another, another connection. Right? Another connection to wild river. Right. Strawberry moon. Oh, if you look very, very carefully down low, you can see some people, some people in a, a water boat. All those water boats, a, a canoe. <clears throat> Strawberry moon. In late spring, a small boy, whose parents had died, went hunting game down by the river, where the Joe, he, all the little people who care for the plants live. He shared what he caught with those little people. In return, they took him in a magic canoe up into the cliffs, taught him anything, and gave him strawberries. He was gone just four days, but when he returned, years had passed, and he was a tall man. He shared with his people what he was taught and gave them the sweetness of the red strawberries. So each year, the Seneca sings songs of praise to the little people, thanking them again for this moon's gift. That's called the sixth moon by the Seneca Nation. Ooh, yeah. Moon when acorns appear. There's only one, there's a figure at the base of the tree. I don't know if you can make it that. Oh, maybe it's, it might be two figures actually. Huh. Moon when acorns appear. When the world was new, it was covered with water until Earth Elder the creator, reached down to the mud below and placed it on turtle sand. Earth elder shaped the sun and stars, then sat for a moment, thinking of what was most needed. What would help the human still to come? That was when Earth elder made the first tree, a great oak with 12 branches arching over the land. And then sitting down beneath it, the sun shining bright, Earth elder thought of food for the people and acorns began to form. So it is each year when the sun shines bright, these first acorns come and our Pomo people gather this moon's coming harvest. Now that's the seven, that's the seven moon, the seventh moon rather, by the uh, the Pomo people. And I believe this is the first of the California nation. Pomo is the California nation. Um, Right. Yeah, oh, actually, I agree. Uh, this this uh, sun uh, sunset or sunrise, maybe it's hard to tell. Um, that definitely looks like uh, Bay Area, which makes sense. Hey, Vihan, um you're making a connection to sunsets you've seen, and this is actually based on a California tribe. So that's great. All right. Oh, speaking of air. Uh, so Tanda Nyangyo, I'll uh, I'll read this one again. I really like this. I'm going to read this again. Maybe in a, um, I'll read it over a uh, on a YouTube or no, on a on a tablet. I'll read it on a tablet, and then my voice hopefully will be um, the voice will be stronger there. Okay, so this this one interesting to have an eagle and a bear so close together. The moon of wild rice. In the old days, they say. <clears throat> Bear came out of the ground and became a man, but he was lonely. He called to the sky, Thunder Eagle, come down to earth and be my brother. And then the giant eagle, who made thunder and lightning by flapping his wings and flashing his eyes, flew down and he too became human. Then the creator, the good mystery, made the thunder people, the water bearers, gave them the gifts of corn and fire, to the people of the bear, the good mystery gave another gift, wild rice. And those other people came to visit the bear village near the mouth of the Minami, oh, the Minami River. They brought it, they brought with them water and fire and corn. The bear people gave them wild rice in exchange. And so it came to be that these two families lived together and harvest the special food in the wild rice. Meat. So that's the, uh, the eighth moon by um, 
by the Menominee people. Eighth Menominee people. Um, okay. Is that familiar? The moose has made a couple appearances here. Moose calling moon. In this season, when leaves begin to turn color, we go down to the lake with the birch bark horn, make the sound which echoes through the spruce tree, the call of a moose looking for a mate. Moo, ah, ah, moo, ah, ah. If we wait there, patience in our canoes, the moose will come. His gray horns are flat, it is long ago before people came. Gluska asked the moose what he would do when he saw human beings. I will throw them up high on my sharp horn, Moose said. So Glooskop pushed his horns flatter <laughs> and made them smaller. Now, Moose, he said, you will not want to harm my people. So the Moose comes and stands, strong as a northeast wind, looks at us, then we walk here back into the world of the thing. So that's a nice moon by the, uh, the tale of the Micmac, the Micmac people. I do like the uh, that story to explain why the the moose antlers are not sharp, uh, like deer antlers or you know other other antlers. Oh, bandits down here! Moon of falling leaves. Long ago, the trees were told they must stay awake seven days and nights, but only the cedar, the pine, and the spruce stayed awake until that seventh night. The reward was, the reward they were given was to always be green, while the other trees must shed their leaves. So each autumn, the leaves of the sleeping trees fall. They cover the floor of our woodlands with colors as bright as the flower of the coming of spring. The leaves return the strength of one more year's growth to the earth. This journey the leaves are taking is part of the great circle, which holds us all close to the earth. And here they show other, this is the 12th, 10th moon of the Cherokee, Cherokee people. And in this painting, there are uh, lots of animals that are part of the Great Circle. That's a pretty one. When moon, when deer drop their horn, chapter, or uh, what is it? Now is the time when all the deer band together in the winter lodges. All autumn, the bucks fight with each other, each one seeking to prove himself stronger, each wanting to be the chief of the season. At one time, the deer kept their horns all year. But when they entered those winter lodges, the bucks continued to fight with each other. Earthmaker, seeing how the deer suffered, sent none of us, his helper, to loosen the horns from their foreheads. In this moon of late on, now, each winter, when the deer gather, just as we enter our medicine lodges, they leave their weapons outside the door. Their horns drop onto the earth, white with peaceful snow. And this is the uh, 11th moon uh, by the one of Winnebago. Winnebago people. After I finish the book, I'll have to show you what's happening. A little bit camera here. All right. Yes, he does. Okay, well, there's a wolf here. I'm gonna pause and show you my little this is my little wolf. Here's there's my little wolf. How are you doing, Turkey? You say hello? You say hello. Oh, all right. You didn't get that back in room 201, did you everybody? <laughs> All right, if you saw a trick, you give me a thumbs up. Like the video, would you? Oh, yeah, yeah. All right, here's a howling wolf, and that's a crazy gun. All right, here we go. Moon, when wolves run together. Long ago, an old wolf came to that time when his life on earth could last no longer. My people, he said, you can follow my footsteps when the time comes for you to join me in the skyline. Then, he left the earth. I mean, higher and higher. In each place he stepped, the sky filled with storm. Chunk Manetu Tanka, we call the wolves, the powerful spirit who looked like dogs. 
And they climb the hill to lift their heads and keep toward that road of stars. Their songs grow circle. When they climb the he- hill to lift their heads and sing toward that road of stars, their songs grow stronger as they join their voices. So, in this moon, we climb the hill, lift our eyes toward the wolf trail, and remember that our lives are st- and songs are stronger when we are together. Ooh, that's a beautiful one. So this is a 12th moon from the Lakota Sioux people. Yeah, that, that's awesome. Ooh. All right, I think this is, yep, this is the last, this is the 13th. <laughs> this is the 13th moon. This is called Big Moon. The elders say our land was shaped by O. Z. Hosa, the changer, who formed himself out of the dust, which fell from the creator's hand after making the world. He pushed against the earth to rise, and great mountains rose up on either side. Then the waters flowed into the place where he stood, made Lake, Lake Shantung, the lake we call Keatokpa, the waters between. When O. Zihozo's travel on this earth were done, excuse me, he came back to rest by the lake once again, making the circle complete. So it is that our own people of the dawn place one final moon at the end of each cycle. We call it Kitchi Kisos Big Moon. Its name is the last in our circle of seasons, 13 moons on old turtles back. So, uh, there is a note, which I'll read to you now, it says, the native people of North America have always depended on the natural world for their survival. Watching the changes going on in the natural world, even into the sky and see it changing. In many parts of North America, the native people relate the cycles of the moon, called grandmother moon, by many Native Americans, to... <clears throat> Uh, I'm sorry. to those seasons. And every year, there are 13 of those moon cycles, each with 28 days from one new moon to the next. Many Native American people look at turtles back as a sort of calendar with this pattern of 13 large scales standing for the 13 moons in each year. His grandfather said, to still that. And as an Abenaki elder said to me long ago, it reminds us that all things are connected that we must try to live in balance. Not all Native American people talk about 12 or 13 moons. In some places, like the foreign or the desert southwest, the seasons are divided between winter or summer, mm-hmm. or between a dry time and the time of rain. Even when speaking of the moon, some Native American nations use several names for the same moon because so many things happen in the natural world at that time. Among the Potawatomi, for example, February is known as the moon when the baby bears are born. Also, moon of snow and moon of the wolf. In this book, we have chosen just one moon story from each of the 13 Native American tribal nations in different regions of the continent to give a wider sense of the many things Native American people have taught, have been taught to notice in this beautiful world around us. It is a world which, as those have learned, must be listened to and respected. It is a world that must be listened to and respected. That's a good, that's a good lesson for, uh, that's a good, uh, <laughs> that's a good lesson for us uh, to think about. All right. Oh, they are stream kind of like bananas there. That is not, I don't think that was a helpful, uh, a helpful post there. Um, Okay, so uh, Race to Moonrise and uh, Island of the Blue Dolphin. And it looks like it's 11 to 16. Ooh, that means my schedule there. I'm pretty sure I have to leave in three minutes. Yikes. All right, so uh, what I'll do is I'll give you a brief, a brief intro to Island of the Blue Dolphin. Uh, this one has this book, um, this book edition has illustrations in it that uh let's see the illustration illustration. illustration. Uh, oh yeah there we go so what i'll do is uh i will 
do this uh, do this read aloud um, on. Oh yeah, here we go. So I'm going to do the read aloud on a podcast. But what I'll do is I'll share the pictures. I'll take a I'll take a snapshot of these, and uh, I think I can use this as the uh, icon uh, for the podcast. So when you listen to the podcast, I think you'll be able to see this um, or these I mean, these images. Uh, and I won't I won't show them in advance because I no spoilers. All right, so I read just maybe just a chapter. So Island of the Blue Dolphin by Scott O'Dell. This so just so you know, uh, this is a uh, a story that takes place uh, with two a brother and a sister, and it is a, a tale that takes place in California, Southern California. Long time. Chapter one. I remember the day the Aleut ship came to our island. At first, it seemed like a small shell afloat on the sea, but then it grew larger and was a gull with folded wings. At last, in the rising sun, it became what it really was a red ship with two red sails. My brother and I had gone to the head of a canyon that winds down to a little harbor. This is called Coral Cove. We had gone to gather roots that grow there in the spring. Our brother Ramon was only a little boy, half my age, which was full. He was small for one who had lived so many times the moon, as quick as a cricket, also foolish as a cricket when he was excited. For this reason, and because I wanted him to help me gather roots and not to rain off, I said nothing about the shell I saw or the gull with folded wings. I went on digging in the brush with my pointed stick, as though nothing at all were happening on the sea, even when I knew for sure that the goal was a ship with two red sails. But Ramo's eyes missed little in the world. They were black like lizards and very large. And like the eyes of a lizard, they sometimes looked sleepy. This was the time when they saw the most. This was the way they looked now. They were half closed. Like those of a lizard lying on a rock, like to flick out its tongue and catch a fly. The sea is smooth, Ronald said. It is a flat stone without any scratches. I'd rather like to pretend that one thing was another. The sea is not a stone without scratches, I said. It is a water, it is water, and no way. Tell me, to me, there's a blue stone, he said, and far away, on the edge of it, is a small cloud that sits on the stone. Clouds do not fit on stone, blue ones or black ones or any kind of stone. This one does. On the sea, I said, dolphins sit there, and gulls, and cormorants, and otters, and whales too, but not clouds. There's a whale, maybe. Ronald was standing on one foot, and then the other, watching the ship coming, which he, didn't, which he did not know was a ship, because he had never seen them. I had never seen them either, but I knew how they looked, because I have been told. So, these two, brother and sister, uh, are, well, we've already learned something about them. Yep, thanks, Uh We, uh, we, or, we um, learned that we know how old the sister is. We know that the younger, we, we, we know the younger um, sibling is a boy. And he is fat, small for his age. He has a brown or black eyes, and he notices things, and that's not a cloud. Or there is a cloud there, but there's a ship, um, which the sister that looks like a shell. So um, this is this is a powerful book. Uh, so now we have. So I read a book. Let's see, I read Alvin Ho. Uh, Alvin Ho had a Boy protagonist, um, and a wild robot, which had a female robot protagonist. Uh, now we're going to have a story with a, uh, a female, a girl protagonist. So nice mixture, I think. All right. Darn dog says bye. Hey, Tricky, you want to say bye to the class? Hey, Tricky. So that's Tricky over there. Hello. See you? Yeah, that's Trixie. Oh, there she goes. I guess I guess Trixie knows that I have to get started. So I'll uh, I'll see you.
see you for uh, SEL Social Justice Zoom. Uh, okay, aloha everybody. Au revoir.